I would never presume to tell you what your opinion should be, of course, but I will offer advice about how to make your letter the most likely to attract my attention and perhaps publication. Here are some basic practical tips. Use email. Sounds obvious, but it's quick and convenient and computers are ubiquitous these days. If you don't have a computer and can't get access to one, the next best thing is to send us a letter by fax. And last, unfortunately, is postal mail or snail mail as it's impolitely called in the digital age. It's sad but true. By the time a postal letter gets into my hands, the odds are great that the letter is about a topic that's already been covered on the letters page. Not always, but often enough. Write early in the day. Since we download the first batch of letters in the morning, it's to your advantage to have your letter in that first pile. This applies, of course, if, a subject that I, if it's a subject that I plan to run letters on the next day. That's something you can't know for sure, but you can lay good odds that if the topic is red hot and news driven, I will try to run letters within a few days. I try to read everything, but a letter sent in the first round often has the best chance. Refer to an article in the paper. This goes without saying if you're responding to a column, an editorial, or an op-ed article, you would do that anyway. But it applies to news articles as well. You'd be amazed how referring to an article in the paper focuses your attention. It really helps you to respond directly and to the point. Speaking of which, write directly and to the point. Generally, letters are about 150 to 175 words. It's a good target to aim for. A rambling letter of a thousand words is less likely to attract my attention than a pithy, well-argued letter of 150 words. We're aiming to get as many voices on the page as possible, and we simply don't have the space in the printed paper for 800-word pieces of op-ed length. That's David's department. We now can go a little longer for web-only letters. As I've written in the past, the Gettysburg Address, one of the jewels of the English language, was only about 250 words. Most people don't realize that. Then again, I should talk. This speech is more than 3,000 words long, so I'm not following my own advice. Write clearly. Keep it civil in tone. No profanity, no shouting, no gratuitous insults. Eloquence and elegance are key. Be, ch be engaging. Try to charm me. Wit and humor and a well-turned phrase are always welcome but irony and sarcasm often don't translate well on the printed page. Argument and disagreement are fine, welcome in fact, but confine your discussion to the substance of the argument instead of attacking the writer. In addition to the big topics, write about something off the beaten path. If you write a letter agreeing or disagreeing with a particularly provocative column or op-ed article, and by all means come ahead, you join the crowd. If I run five or six letters about an article, I also have to reject dozens of others on the same article, though they may be perfectly worthy. If, however, you send a well-written letter about a smaller article in the Times, you may be the only one, so your chances of getting published go way up. Your letter should be exclusive to the Times and not previously published in any medium, including the web. Usually if a letter is in response to a specific article or column, it will be exclusive. But sometimes on general news stories, writers understandably send letters to more than one newspaper. If that's the case and we select your letter, we'll ask you to withdraw it from other papers. Finally, when sending your letter, please give full contact information, including daytime and evening phone numbers and address for our internal use, not for publication, as well as your current location for dateline purposes. The universal truth of op-ed is it's still really hard to get on the page. We receive, on average, 1,200 unsolicited manuscripts a week, most of them by email. And that's sort of a low number. Depending on news, that number can go up to 1,600, 1,700 a week. At the same time, the editors solicit, assign, and receive plenty of articles too. Yet on an average day, we can only fit about 900 words on the page. Um, thus, uh, and it would take Steve Strogatz no time to figure this out, the math is wildly daunting. Op-ed is kind of like siphoning the ocean through a straw. Any discussion of the page, any discussion of how it works, needs to start from that basic premise. There's a crushing demand for a tiny bit of newspaper real estate. The big question, um, the one that is often on people's minds, is what we're looking for. Um, Op-ed, in some measure, is shaped by its neighbors. Um, we tend to look for articles that cover subjects and make arguments 
that haven't been articulated elsewhere in the editorial space. So if the editorial page, for example, has a forceful, long-held view on a certain topic, we're more inclined to publish an op-ed that disagrees with that view. Um, if the editorials and the columnists are left of center, it's incumbent on us to reach out to more conservative voices. If you open the paper and find the editorial page and op-ed in lockstep agreement or consistently writing on the same subject day after day, then we aren't doing our job. Our decisions about which essays to publish aren't governed, of course, by a need for editorial variety alone. Among other things, we look for timeliness, ingenuity, strength of argument, freshness of opinion, clear writing, and newsworthiness. You know, sometimes we're simply looking for something to fill a hole that opened up at 7.30 at night. Um, humor, of course, can be absolutely great when it's funny. Um, and, uh, you know, it doesn't help to be famous. In fact, the bar of acceptance, I think, gets nudged a little higher for people who have the means to get their message out in other ways. Elected officials, heads of state, corporate titans, stars of stage and screen. It's actually their responsibility to say something forthright and unexpected.